SpaceX is preparing Stage Zero for the next Starship launch in just a few weeks. This development comes after the company made a mammoth effort to repair the heavily damaged launch pad. In today's video, let's talk about this latest development and when the Starship will finally be ready to launch again. Can the massive craft make it to orbit this time? Starship is a super heavy lift rocket and spacecraft built to carry immense cargo and numerous astronauts into deep space. The 400-foot tall stainless steel tower looms over NASA's rocket, the Space Launch System. It would take about five billboards stacked on top of the ladder to measure up to Musk's space vehicle. SpaceX estimates its rocket also has about twice as much thrust. The rocket is made of stainless steel, a material Musk is particularly fond of due to its relatively low price. Unlike NASA's Mega Moon rocket, which flies on super-chilled liquid hydrogen and oxygen, this beast is fueled with 10 million pounds of liquid methane and oxygen. This new fuel can be stored at more manageable temperatures than liquid hydrogen, meaning it doesn't need as much insulation and is less prone to leaks, a problem that often stymies NASA launches. Starship is intended to eventually evolve into a fully reusable launch and landing system designed for trips to the Moon, Mars, and other destinations. Its reusability is the holy grail of space, Musk said at a company event in South Texas in February 2022 because it will make spaceflight more affordable to the average person. The most powerful rocket to ever launch from Earth left a crater at the SpaceX launch site last week, but Elon Musk said teams could be ready to try another Starship launch in as little as one to two months. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to build out a backup site for human launches on the Space Coast to assuage NASA's fears of potential Starship damage for when it starts flying from Kennedy Space Center. Those launches won't come until SpaceX completes testing from SpaceX's Starbase launch site in Boca Chica, Texas, where the first integrated launch of the Starship and its Super Heavy booster took place last Thursday. While it didn't make it to space, the booster's 33 Raptor engines, which can produce more than 17 million pounds of thrust, were able to clear the launch tower. About four minutes after flying only to about 24 miles and tumbling back to Earth, SpaceX sent the self-destruct command resulting in the rocket exploding over the Gulf of Mexico. The vehicle experienced multiple engines out during the flight test, lost altitude, and began to tumble, reads an update on the SpaceX website. The flight termination system was commanded on both the booster and ship. While Musk had tempered expectations for the Starship mission to complete its goal of making it to space and flying two-thirds of the way around the Earth on a suborbital flight path, teams said clearing the launch pad was their number one goal, and part of a testing approach by the company that expects hardware to fail through more frequent test launches. While the failing engines and lack of a planned stage separation are two big problems for the next launch attempt, repairing the major damage from the launch site will be needed first. All that's left of the concrete lateral support beam is the rebar. Hopefully this didn't grunk the launch mount, Musk posted on Twitter, images comparing the launch site's construction to post-launch damage. Musk said the company had prepared for a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount, but that it was not ready in time for the test launch. He said, We wrongly thought the launch pad concrete would survive the launch based on data from a static fire performed in February that saw 31 of the 33 engines manage a successful test burn. Still early in the analysis, but the force of the engines when they throttled up may have shattered the concrete rather than simply eroding it, he wrote on Twitter. The engines were only at half thrust for the static fire test. Video from around the launch site showed chunks of concrete flying all over the place, including several pieces into the surf just over a quarter mile away. Images of the rocket lifting into the sky showed only 27 of the 33 engines lit up a minute into the flight, and more failed before the mission concluded. It's unclear if any were damaged by debris on liftoff. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and what we learned, a tremendous amount about the vehicle and ground systems today that will help us improve on future flights of Starship, the company posted on its site. Starship's power was nearly twice that of NASA's space launch system, which still holds the record at 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust for a rocket that made it to space during its launch from Kennedy Space Center last November on the Artemis One moon mission. The damage SLS did to the mobile launcher at Kennedy Space Center's launch pad 39B has led to what continues to be months of repair work as teams get it ready for Artemis II in 2024. The sheer power of Starship for what's planned to be future launches from KSC at SpaceX's launch pad 39A raised NASA concerns last year with the uncertainty of what sort of damage it might do to the pad. 
SpaceX is continuing to build out a Starship launch tower at 39A for when the spacecraft is ready for operational flights. The problem, though, without Boeing Starliner as a backup yet, NASA relies on SpaceX with its Crew Dragon spacecraft as its sole U.S.-based transport of astronauts to the International Space Station. Those launches for now can only take place from 39A, and the potential threat of Starship launch pad damage has driven SpaceX to work on upgrading its nearby launch site at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station Space Launch Complex 40 so it could fly the Dragon spacecraft as well. SpaceX and the NASA team have done an incredible job laying out the crew and cargo capability from Pad 40, said NASA's Commercial Crew Program Manager Steve Sitch in February. SpaceX has started groundbreaking on that pad and the initial work to clear the site and then pour the pilings for the crew tower. SpaceX's Dragon Mission Management Director Sarah Walker said she expects the site to be ready this fall for initial launches with just cargo. We think it enables even greater flexibility for our Dragon customers, she said. Our primary focus first will allow cargo missions to launch and just allow them to be interchangeable between the two pads, 39 and 40. And then we'll add the final certification elements for human spaceflight capability soon after, but we're seeing good progress. NASA has a vested interest in Starship's progress as well, though, and it will rely on a version of it to act as the human landing system for the Artemis III mission as soon as 2025, which aims to return humans, including the first woman, to the surface of the moon for the first time since Apollo 17 in 1972. The space agency has tapped SpaceX to develop a human landing system version of Starship with a $4 billion contract. As part of the deal, the company will need to demonstrate an uncrewed test flight to the moon beforehand. During Artemis 3, Starship will transfer astronauts from NASA's Orion spacecraft to the lunar South Pole and back. But in the fourth mission, Starship is expected to dock at a moon-orbiting space station, the yet-to-be-built Gateway, and ferry astronauts back and forth to the moon. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson told reporters in December 2022 that SpaceX appears to be on schedule with the contract and intends to do an uncrewed moon landing toward the end of this year. That mission would be followed by another landing with astronauts in late 2024. Slips are always possible because it's a brand new system, Nelson said, but they have been quite impressed with what they have done with other systems. The SpaceX founder's ultimate vision is to use a fleet of starships to send one million humans to Mars by 2050. To be clear, Musk doesn't just want to establish a place for people to visit, but a self-sustaining city. He imagines that, with a bit of warming, humans could restore a thick atmosphere in oceans on Mars, making it a more hospitable environment and even able to grow crops. There's a fundamental juncture in the history of really any civilization on a single planet, which is, do you get to the second planet or do you not, Musk told the National Academies in 2021. I propose we do, and I think we should as soon as possible. The spacecraft would be spacious enough for 100 passengers along with their luggage, plus the materials to build homes, businesses, rocket fuel stations, and iron foundries. The journey getting there would be long, Musk said, but the Starship would have entertainment such as zero-gravity games, movies, lectures, and a restaurant. Musk envisions fleets of Starships flying multiple times per day here on Earth, their super-heavy boosters coming directly back to the launch mount after each liftoff or rapid inspection, refueling, and relaunch. Such extensive reuse could theoretically bring the cost of each Starship mission down to just a few million dollars, Musk has said. That price point would truly be revolutionary considering Starship's power. It will be capable of lifting 165 tons to Earth orbit on each mission in its reusable configuration. To put the vehicle's brawn into perspective, Super Heavy's 33 Raptors generate about 16.5 million tons of thrust at liftoff. That's nearly twice as much as the previous record holder, NASA Space Launch System Mega Rocket, which flew for the first time last November on the Artemis 1 moon mission. SpaceX has already sold two private around-the-moon Starship missions as well. One was booked by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa, who will fly with a crew of eight artists and influencers. Dennis Tito, who paid his way to the International Space Station back in 2001, will fly on the other Starship moon mission along with his wife, Akiko, and other passengers whose identities have not yet been disclosed. Target launch dates for those two private moon missions have not yet been announced, but they and all of Starship's other envisioned future flights are a little closer to reality now that the huge vehicle has gotten off the ground. Space tourism is a relatively new concept and has only become possible in recent years due to advancements in technology. In the past, only astronauts and professional space travelers had the opportunity to experience the thrill of space travel. 
But now, with companies like SpaceX offering private missions to space, the dream of space travel is becoming a reality for more and more people. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's new solution to prevent pad damage from future Starship tests. Do you think the next Starship test flight will be a success? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.